Welcome in everybody to Betting Pros. It's me, Joey P, Joe Pizapia, and today, oh baby, we're gonna have our NFC preview. Last week, in case you missed it, we had Ariel Epstein from Sports Grid taking us to the AFC, and today it's one of my favorite people, one of my members of Team Black Book himself. You can check him out on the Action Network and Rotoviz and a whole lot of other places. He is always working, and that's why I love him so much, because he reminds me of me. He's the one, the only Mike Randall. You can follow him on Twitter at Randall Rant. Mikey, it is so nice to see you. I'm so used to, in the years gone by, doing shows with you every week. Now we don't get to do that, so this, my friend, is a special treat to spend some quality time with you. Joey, it's about special moments, and this is certainly one of them. I am honored to be here. You and I have done great work together. Now we're doing it on video. We're going to talk NFC. Football's around the corner. Let's get after it. Let's get after it, baby. So today we're going to talk about those divisions, how they're set up, and of course, we're going to be using Betting Pros. And if you haven't already, make sure you go over to Betting Pros. And don't forget about our apps and everything that we offer here at Fantasy Pros, too. That we can get all the updates on things that are going on when lines are moving. But Betting Pros gives you that consensus. And if you're new to wagering, it's a great place because if there's wagers you like, you can always move over and find the betting house that you think have the best odds for that wager if you're really hot on it and take advantage of it. So basically, it's like all in all the houses having all of them one time one stop shop and makes life a lot easier and i like that i like that i'm a busy guy i need efficiency and that's what betting pros is going to give you and let's start here with the nfc east oh everybody's favorite division mike because you know it was so exciting to watch no team with a 500 record in this division last year but you know what that washington football team plucky I enjoyed them. I was rooting for them. It was them against the world with that incredible defense. One can only imagine that defense will be better. Ryan Fitzpatrick comes into that division. The Cowboys, hopefully, will have Dak Prescott healthy and ready to rock in week one. Then there's the Giants and the Eagles. The Cowboys, though, are the favorite. Of course they are, because they're the public team, plus 145 on the Cowboys. The Washington football team, plus 230. The Giants at plus 375 and plus 500 for the Philadelphia Eagles. And again, these are the consensus betting pros numbers. So when you look at the East, Mike, obviously every time you look at the Cowboys, the Yankees, seems like that, there's always that big public money and that kind of influences the spread. But is this plus 145 actually a pretty good number on a Cowboys team that has an offense that is really just ready to rock and roll? It's a decent number, but I have questions about the Cowboys. Their defense was so bad last year that they spent the first six picks in the NFL draft on defense. Dak has returned and the offense was exploding when he was there and healthy last year, over 30 points per game. But my problem, Joe, is the offensive line isn't quite as elite as it used to be. And the defense is revamped. In comes Dan Quinn. Mm -hmm. Listen, Dan Quinn struggled in Atlanta, had the peak moment with the Super Bowl, went downhill. I don't know if he's the defensive guru to solve the problem. So I like plus money with Dallas. But I don't think they're going to win the division. I'm going to go in a different direction. And as you said, America backs the Cowboys. That's always going to inflate that number. All right. So who do you like here? Is it the Washington football team defense with an actual quarterback? Because last year, I mean, the quarterback play was, let's just say, messy. Is that a, uh, is that a kind way of putting it? Seven and nine with Alex Smith, Dwayne Haskins, and Kyle <laughs> Allen at quarterback. Their defense last year, third in defensive DVOA, second against the pass. I like to look, Joe, in these divisions at the most reliable unit, and that unit is the Washington defense in this mm. division. There's no chance that a Ron Rivera defense is going to come in and not be elite. So they bring in Ryan Fitzpatrick. That's going to be better quarterback play. Their offensive line should be better, and they won the division last year with that limited quarterback production. Antonio Gibson, by the way, used to be a wide receiver. Now they're finally using him in the passing game. So many weapons, consistency, and they almost won a playoff game with Taylor Heineke. Mm -hmm. My favorite is Washington. I think they should be a favorite on the board. I like them here to win the division. Once again, you and I see eye to eye, and that's why I enjoy doing shows with you. Sometimes there's debate, but I'm with you, man. I think Washington might just win this out. You're right. This is the best unit there defensively by far. And also, if they could just get enough offense, and there's already some talk about Antonio Gibson getting a CMC-like workload, Ooh, baby, sign me up for that in fantasy. I don't know if that's well, possible. What's funny, Joe, is they've said that about J.D. McKissick and Antonio Gibson and all the running backs there. But the big key to me is the one stat I like to look at is the result in close games. One score games last year, Washington was 3-5, 0-3 mm. in games decided by three points. That usually regresses. I'll take last year's division champion with a little bit of positive regression. 
I love that. The positive regression. I like to be positive. All right, let's move on to the north here. The Packers are at the top. Heavy favorites, minus 177. That's the consensus betting pros number. Then you have the Vikings at plus 300. The Bears at plus 550. The Lions at plus 2,500. God bless them. They're so sweet, the Lions, right? So let's leave them out of it. You know, Justin Fields gave some people something to think about. Certainly some excitement uh, in that first preseason game, running around, making some plays. The Vikings defense seems, on paper, to be going in the right direction. Although, my goodness... Mike Zimmer was none too happy with his defense against the Broncos last week and their performance. Is this just a foregone conclusion? You stay away from this division because the Packers and Aaron Rodgers kind of have something to prove yet again? No, it's not. And I'm going with the Vikings. And I love that performance because it's going to sink the number. The key question, and you and Ariel talked about that last week, is the Vikings defense at home. First off, they Mm -hmm. were affected by no crowd noise. You talked about that in Minnesota. That's going to return. Last year, no Danielle Hunter. He was fifth in sacks in 2019. Anthony Barr, Eric Kendricks, linebackers combined, missed 19 games. And defensive tackle run stopper Michael Pierce, he opted out because of COVID. They signed Patrick Peterson. They signed Bashad Breeland. I think the defense returns. Again, I bank on Mike Zimmer at home. He has a great number against the spread, and they're very tough to beat. And by the way, in the last nine games between the Packers and the Vikings, because if you're going to win this division, you have to be able to beat Green Bay, Minnesota, 5-3-1. and one. I look Ooh. for a bounce back in the Vikings. I like the number at plus 300. I grabbed it earlier. Now that Rodgers is back, I think the money and the public sentiment is going too far in the Packers' way. I like the Vikings here in the NFC North. You know I'm not the biggest Aaron Rodgers fan. I have great respect for Aaron Rodgers. So Always respect. This kind of warms the cockles of my heart when you say things like that. And I remember last year, too. They went in there to Green Bay, and they put a whooping on them. That was a fun game. Uh, not if you're a Packers fan, but if you're a football fan, that was kind of a fun game last season. Uh, always weird not to see people in Lambeau Field for that game, but still, uh, great stat there with the head-to-head, because you're right, it is going to come down to them. I don't think the Bears are quite ready yet, but uh, certainly keem to, a team to keep our eyes on. Let's move over to the South here. Uh, very different South, I think, year over year, because Drew Brees is gone. Uh, the Buccaneers, the defending, reigning, undisputed champs, minus 200, but the Saints at plus 350, the Falcons plus 800, the Panthers at plus 1,000. Now, you know I'm I'm a Tom Brady guy. Uh, that's that's well known here in the well industry, documented. of course. Well yeah. documented, well revered, but justified. Justified. This is to me is the Bucks again. That defense so good. Tom Brady so good. Having fun, loving life. The only thing that can stop the Bucks for me from winning this division is a, just a rash of injuries, including maybe even Brady. That's the only thing that I think can hold them back because even if they have an injury to say a Fournette or a Ronald Jones, well, you still got running back depth here on the team. You have wide receiver depth on the team. You have some young guys too who can fill in and step up. We saw that even last year at times happen. But, I mean, when you look at A.B. and Chris Evans and, and Godwin, and you look at the Saints and what's become of them now between no Drew Brees and the Michael Thomas drama that's unfolding in front of us here with his injury and whether or not he ever comes back and plays it down for them, I mean, the Falcons are in a rebuild. Is this a hard stay away for you when you're looking at this south? It's the Bucks, and there's no competition here. Once Michael Thomas went down, the changeover in quarterback, I can't go with the Saints. Saints with a great defense. We're certainly not going with the Falcons with a first-year head coach and the Panthers, no. However, I don't mind at minus 200 going with the Bucks because I think they're the clear division favorite. I think they're one of the strongest favorites in the entire NFL. But another area I want to look at is Carolina's over-under number. I'm taking mm-hmm. the Panthers over 7.5. I think that number is too low. I think it's a second year now. We're talking about the coaching staff. Matt Rule's second year. Sam Darnold comes in. Joe, Sam Darnold's reputation went down the drain because we heard him say the phrase, I'm seeing ghosts. Mm -hmm. If there was no Mike and that did not happen, we would not be thinking so low about Sam Darnold. He's had terrible offensive line play. Carolina should provide that a little bit better than he has in the past. And most importantly, Carolina's strength of schedule 13th overall, but they get off to a great start. Listen to the teams Carolina plays to start. Home Jets at Houston, home Philly. That's four home games in the first six weeks. They were 3-8 and in one-score games. They were 0-3 in games decided by three points or less. They play Tampa Bay in weeks 16 and 18, which means Tampa Bay could be resting because they could have locked up the division. So I'm all in on the Bucs. There is no challenge here from the Saints or anyone else, but I also like Carolina's over, which is 7.5. 
Week 18 still sounds weird to me when you say it. Yes. I just I still gotta still gotta wrap my mind around week 18, but I, I'm with you, man. I, I think that Sam Darnold can really turn things around here. Joe Brady, one of the best play callers in my opinion, the uh, soon to be head coach of the Cincinnati Bengals in a year from now. Uh, uh, that's that's uh, what I think. Anyway, okay, we'll see if it. I'm right. Is there money I can put on that somewhere? Because I'd like to, Randall. If I could, I'd like to put it's money possible. on that. It's possible. The Bengals don't like to pay for coaches, though, that that aren't there. So I, they I don't might know have no that, choice. They, they might have, have no choice, choice. <laughs> with the with the True. with the crowd they're putting together with Burrow and Jamar Chase and those guys. It just feels like the right fit. Uh, but I, I'm with you 100. percent I do like that Panthers number as well on the over because you get that healthy CMC back, Darnold with something to prove. Um, a lot of good stuff there, and and uh, some winnable games. You know, the Saints. You know, the Saints got old. The Saints kind of had their window and it's kind of stopped. And I don't know, man, Taysom Hill, Teddy Bridgewater. I mean, excuse me, Taysom Hill and um, Jameis Winston. It's just the lack of decision here on that really just kind of puts me in a tough spot when it comes to the Saints. Yeah, I agree. Marquez Calloway, listen, great for fantasy with the options and the value he has. Mm -hmm. Not great that he's your top wide receiver for at least, Joe, seven to eight games and maybe longer this year for New Orleans. All right, let's go over to the very competitive division here, which is the West. You got the Rams at plus 200, the 49ers consensus number plus 200, then the Seahawks plus 275, and the Cardinals at plus 600. So, look, I I like the Cardinals. I like Kyler Murray. I think they're going to be fun to watch. The play calling still sometimes is uh, questionable, but I think it's a three-team division. How do you see this one working out? Because I'm curious. This is very tight. You have Russell Wilson. You have Matt Stafford now in town. And who knows? Trey Lance could even be the week one starter. I still think it's unlikely. But the way Jimmy Garoppolo gets hurt, it might be sooner than later just because whether they like it or not. So how do you see the West here unfolding from a wagering perspective with these teams so close? Plus 200 Rams, plus 200 Niners, and plus 275 Seahawks. I'm going to call Coolio because this is a better's paradise, the (laughs) NFC West. It's between the Rams and San Francisco for me. I'm going to toss Seattle out. Their offensive line is always in shambles. And sure, the book has been on Russell Wilson that he starts slow and he's like a quarterback 14 in fantasy. And then he has a miraculous finish. Last year, it was the reverse. We're talking Mm -hmm. about Russell Wilson, no doubt MVP, and then things slow down. I know Pete Carroll gets the defense together. I'm going to put them a notch below. It's the Rams or San Francisco, and I'm going to go with San Francisco for three reasons. First is the rushing attack. Center Alex Mack is now back with Kyle Shanahan, and that should be huge for their offensive line. If we can just get his sweating problems done, Joe, he's having a lot of sweating problems on the exchange with the ball to the quarterback. Everything should be fine. Maybe he's just excited to be there. But that offensive line with Trent Williams, who's the highest graded tackle per PFF, is going to be solid. Let's talk about their running backs. Raheem Mostert, Trey Sermon, of course, is shooting up fantasy draft boards. Jermichael Hasty impressed in week one. They have a litany of running backs that are impressive. Second reason is the schedule. They get the AFC South along with the Falcons, Bengals, Eagles, and Lions. They have the easiest strength of schedule per Warren Sharp in the league, and it's not close. Lastly, the Niners just need some injury regression. Last year, they went 6-10. and 10. Jimmy Garoppolo, out for 10 games. Debo Samuel, 9. Nick Bosa, D. Ford, missed time. And mm-hmm. Mostert was out for 8. When they were healthy, it was only two games. What happened week 6 and 7? Beat the Rams and won at New England. Give me Kyle Shanahan. Give me some average quarterback play. And I think they should go over their win total, which is 10.5. People think that's high. There's a reason it's high, folks. I like the 49ers in the NFC West. I think this is going to be competitive. I think it's going to be down the wire. But I'm going to take the Rams in this one, and here's why. I think Matthew Stafford unleashed now is going to be very different, Matt Stafford. You're basically taking one of the more underrated quarterbacks in the game and taking him in possibly one of the worst places you could possibly be and dropping him one of the best offensive minds in football in Sean McVay. You've got a bunch of wide receivers to throw the football. You've got a really good tight end in Tyler Higbee. I do think the Cam Akers injury does hurt them. I'm still curious to see if they pick up somebody else. But hey, maybe they do like the kids that they have. Maybe Jones and Funk are guys that they like. We'll see. But I don't know, man. It feels to me like Aaron Donald in this defense, what this team was really lacking was, you know, the quarterback play. Jared Goff just could not get it done in the big spots. 
I think Matthew Stafford will. And I think as much as I love Trey Lance, and I do, I am Mr. Trey Lance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I just have a hard time thinking that the rookie can take him past Matt Stafford. This is going to be a fascinating division. I think it's fun that neither of us went Seahawks in it, even though that's the Uh, best number. (laughs) Yeah, and I have no problem. I think Stafford's going to have a monster year. And I think the injury to Cam Akers means he's going to pass even more. Mm -hmm. I'm just a little hesitant with the Rams offensive line. A little bit old. The defense is certainly solid. I have no problem with that at all. I think it's a coin flip between those two teams. I do put Seattle a little bit behind these other two. All right, let's take a look now at the NFC. The winners, potentially. Uh, we have the Bucks at plus 300 here. The favorites, of course. Actually, the 3-1. to one, It's actually a better number than I thought you'd get on the Bucks. Mm-hmm. If you can find anything above that, get on there and take it. Because I know it's boring. I know it's frustrating, folks. I know you hate Tom Brady. But this is a really complete football team, and it's got continuity, and that is a tough thing to break. It's the continuity year over year. The fact that these guys really enjoy each other's company, that goes a long way. Like, this whole good vibes thing, it's not something to overrate. It's something that actually is investable in a lot of ways. Plus 300 there for the Buccaneers. The Packers at plus 550. Your 49ers, that's right, I'm going to call them your 49ers now, plus 650. And of course, the Rams at that same number, plus 650. So of the favorites, to me, Mike, when I look at this board, I see the Bucs and I see the Rams. Those are the two teams I could see coming out of the NFC. I just have a hard time. Aaron Rodgers, you know, in the big spot, just always comes up short. It's just what history has taught us. And, you know, the 49ers, again, you're going to get past Brady, you're going to get past Stafford in the playoffs and Aaron Rodgers or some combination. I find that a little hard to believe. But for you, is there a certain place or places you would want to place bets? Yeah, for the favorites, those are fine. And I think plus 300 for Tampa Bay is very strong, given that they're probably going to have home field advantage, well coached. As long as there's no major injuries, you said, I think they should be fine. I have concerns with the Packers. The offensive line, Corey Lindsey is now with the Chargers. Rick Wagner now with the Ravens. They have David Bakhtiari, of course, the mm-hmm. master chugger from my Milwaukee Bucks title run there in the, in the Your Milwaukee? When, when did you become a Bucks fan? When did that happen? Oh, yes. I've been a Bucks fan. I have a good friend that works for the Bucks here. Fear oh, the okay. deer. Bucks in six, of course, Joe. Okay. But <laughs> the reputation of the Packers defense to me is still soft. Per PFF, they were ranked 21st and 27th in pressure rate the last two years. Their secondary, by the way, is a little overrated. Jair Alexander, fantastic, all Mm -hmm. pro. But everyone else, I'm not sure about that. I don't like the Packers there. I would roll with the Niners as well. I think the Niners, like I said, injury regression is going to make a big, big difference. So with the favorites for me, if you want to go Bucks, I'm fine with it. Also like the Niners at plus 650. All right. Did anybody ever tell you you look like you could be a head coach, especially with the with the hat and the outfit Thank today? You, you really Thank I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here on the show here. And of course, you can always watch us over on betting pros on the YouTube side of fantasy pros. And I'm, I'm looking at him looking at Randall. I'm thinking this is like a, a press conference with a head coach here the way you're all done up today. Well, and this was such a big thing for me. I went to, uh, to look at Al Pacino and his <laughs> motivational speech about those inches. You're right a quarterback. In face. That's what I'm that's you're what the leader I'm right of a now. team. Yep. Jamie, Fo- Jamie Foxx is behind me clapping right now. Absolutely. There you go. Jamie Foxx, actually, his character in that reminds me a little of Justin Fields. I got a similar kind of swagger about them. Yep. That's that's yeah. the, that's the way true. I would go with that. All right. Some of the long shots here, and some are longer than others. You got the Seahawks plus 1,100, the Cowboys plus 1,500, then the Saints at plus 16. That's lighting money on fire. Don't do that, boys and girls. The Vikings plus 22, the Cardinals plus 22, and then there's the Washington football team at plus mm-hmm. 2,500. Now... Uh, I'm an old school football guy and there's something about playing defense in January and running the football that it works. It's one of those things that it really works. And if you could take one of those elite quarterbacks off the field, play defense, control the football. And what's the kryptonite of Tom Brady is a pass rush. It's the only way to beat him is to put him on his rear end. That's something the Washington football team can do. If you're going to sprinkle a little bit of chips the sprinkle for me on a long shot is the Washington football team this year, as crazy as that sounds. You're kind of nodding your head. I feel like you're kind of feeling that too a little bit. Yeah, you took the words out of my mouth. That's why great minds think alike. Well, I want a defense and I want to run the ball. And that's why I like Minnesota at plus 2,200 and I like Washington at, at plus 2,500. Offensive line, stop the run, pressure. Keep in mind, Tampa Bay almost lost to Taylor Heineke. Just keep that in mind in the playoffs last year. That's the type of teams I want. As much as my Saints had here, without Michael Thomas, I just don't think they can do it, and they have to work out the quarterback play. Sean Payton's going to do some great things with Taysom Hill, but I just think these other teams are better 
built for that win that they need in the cold. Minnesota, Washington, no problem going on the road here. I like both of those. Plus 2,200 and plus 2,500, I will take it. Plus 25, you don't have to put that much on it. You know, put a little bit, and then all of a sudden, if it starts to look good, then you double down later on. That's what you do. All right, let's take a look at some win totals and some player props in the NFC. Let's start with the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, We already kind of talked about the Carolina Panthers, which I'm glad Mike brought it up because that's a team that I think is not being taken as seriously as they should. Also, a very young defense. They spent every single draft pick two years ago on defense, and they were very green. But if you walk closely last year, that Carolina Panthers defense started to get it. They started to uh, look very young, athletic, and they weren't nearly as taken advantage of as they were in the first part of the season. I'm fascinated to see what that unit looks like in 2021. Let's talk about the Cardinals, though. The number for them is 8.5, plus money on the over, plus 105, minus 125 on the under. Can, and again, we have to, like I said last week, we have to readjust our brains here about this 8 number because that's not, there's no 500 anymore. You're either a winning team or you're a losing team unless you get a tie, and nobody likes that. Nobody! Eight and a half, that's the number. What do you do with the Cardinals here? Over, under, or stay away? Didn't share my notes with you prior to this, but you said 500, and that's the key number. Joe, in Cliff Kingsbury's career, both as a college <laughs> coach and a pro coach, he has got over 500 just twice in really? eight years. What? He's getting this reputation as this fake sharp in the fantasy community. 35 and 40 career record in college as a head coach, 13, 18 and 1 as an NFL head coach. They were 8 and 8 last year when San Francisco was 6 and 10. I am taking the under here. I know they added J.J. Watt, but they added a lot of older players, which during this year, with COVID still as an issue, could be a problem. J.J. Watt, 32. A.J. Green, 33. Malcolm Butler, 31. James Connors, 26. But he's had injury history, just came off the COVID list. The Cardinals face the sixth most difficult slate of pass defenses per Warren Sharp. I'll take the fake Sharp, Cliff Kingsbury. We will go <laughs> under eight and a half. I love it, man. You're crushing it. All right, let's go to the Dallas Cowboys here again the public money and sometimes i like to take advantage of this now the number is nine and a half here plus 115 on the over minus 135 on the under on that nine and a half so look i know you talk about the defense being bad but man this feels like a team that could really just outscore everybody or at least most people to get to 10 wins cowboys feel like a 10 win team to me especially because they play the eagles and the giants twice i mean yeah, you, you gotta go three and one. You gotta imagine like that's three wins right there, at least in my mind. But what do you think about this team? I know they drafted Micah Parsons. I, I know they've made some some moves here, at least in the off season. But nine and a half, can they get to double digits? I feel like they can. I don't think any team in the NFL is more destined for nine and eight than the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> they have a defense that still I still think is going to struggle. I don't think the offensive line is that much better than the defenses of both Washington and the Giants. By the way in this division. The Cowboys get the public money that the number always gets inflated. Is Dak healthy? Mm. I think so, but the second MRI is a little concerning, and if you know if he misses time, this team is going south. Little note here, Joe, since 2000 with Dallas, because they receive all the public money, they are 14-7 and seven to the under win total since 2000. I'm going to make it 15-7. and seven. We will go under here with the Cowboys. Very nice. Okay. All right. So we're going to differ on that one. We're we're together on one, different on the other. Let's go to the Packers. Uh, The number is 10 and a half minus 120 on the over plus 100 on the under. So 10 and a half. I mean, that's that's pretty strong season, obviously Um, a division that could be pretty competitive, though. So when you're looking at this north and you're looking at the Packers here, can they get the over 10 and a half? Is this a number you like or don't? This one I'm staying away. I Mm -hmm. think it's the Vikings and the Packers clearly ahead of everyone else in the division. Lions I'm not into. I think the Bears are headed in the wrong direction. So could I see Minnesota Joe getting 11 wins and then the Packers also getting 11 and Minnesota winning the tiebreaker or possibly 12 and 11? Sure. I don't like the defense. I think they're soft. I don't like the offensive line. I also have this thing with Mojo, you know, the whole thing with Aaron Rodgers in the offseason. I'm telling you who I want, Randall Cobb. I'm going to stay away from this one. I could see, even though I'm down on the Packers, them cresting this number. So it's a stay away from me. Cresting this number. Nice vocab. I enjoy that. You you know, you you come for the football, you stay for the vocab, everybody. (laughs) Los Angeles Rams, the over-under for the Rams this year. That number is 10 and a half. Plus 120 on the 10 and a half. You're getting a nice number there on that. Minus 140 
on the 10 and a half on the under so your thoughts here on the rams again tough division so what are your thoughts here on this one yeah super competitive division but the plus money on the over 10 and a half is attractive to me this is the most competitive division but they could have two teams that are just that much better seattle is sort of the wild card here but the rams do look solid they can put points up aaron donald jalen ramsey mm. The plus money is the key here. The fact that I'm getting plus 120 if they can get 11 wins is too attractive to pass up. Even though I like San Francisco to possibly win the NFC, I'll take the over here with the Rams. This next one, I want to smash the under. Let me tell you, smash it. New Orleans Saints, nine, nine without Drew Brees, without Michael Thomas. I'm sorry, I just cannot get there. Plus 100. I know it's minus 120, but you know what? I think this is one of the few times I see a minus number and I'm just going to go with the under and I'm going to just grin and bear it because I don't see how they get there. I don't see how this is a winning team. I really don't. I mean, look, they, they've they strung it together. Sean Payton is a wonderful football coach, but, you know, I think the more, more than just losing Drew Brees, the quarterback, he was Drew Brees, the leader. And I think that is just something you, you can't account for enough year over year. And I just think this is going to be an ugly year for the Saints personally. I agree. I think it's a challenging year. I like Taysom Hill over Jameis Winston. I think he went uh, three and one. I think it was last year. And one of those games was the Denver game. I understand mm-hmm. that with the with the quarterback issue. Right, that was a gimme. Yeah. But there was a disconnect between Kamara and Taysom Hill getting those dump offs. They don't have any receiving options. They really need Adam Troutman to pop as a tight end. If he doesn't, they're going to be in trouble. The defense is great, but they're in a in a division here where they're going to be challenged. They have Tampa Bay. That to me is going to be two losses without Michael Tom. Thomas, Marquez Callaway's their leading receiver. I just can't see it. I think Kamara's going to hit some regression as well. We can talk about that later. I'm with you on the under. Even though the minus money is there, I'm going to take it, and I'm going to lay the juice. Troutman needs to have a, a good game this week. I, I need to see something He needs to be Jimmy Troutman. Graham. He, for them to be yeah, competitive this year, right. it's got to be Jimmy Graham. Yes. I, but I need to see something, some glimmer of that this mm-hmm. week. Because we're not going to see anything in week three. Because yep. everyone's going to sit. Like, that, That's correct. Like this is such a weird pattern, too, because we have preseason. So we have game one where you're going to get, like, a little glimmer, a series or two of guys. And then, you know, the secondary guys come in and the mm-hmm. third string guys come in. And then this week, I'm anticipating we're going to see a half of football, maybe, from some of these teams. Yep. Some more than others. But then the following week, I expect to see nothing again. It's going to be like the old week four, I would imagine. Now, maybe a couple position battles and things like that to look at. But I don't know. This is kind of a make or break week for Troutman there to to kind of give you at least some confidence going into the year. Let's transition here and finish with some fun stuff. Let's do some player props in the NFC. And let's start with my favorite quarterback in the world, Aaron Rodgers, who is never, never negative and obviously is a big team guy. 4,550 and a half. That is the number. 4,550 and a half. Minus 112 on the over. Minus 112 on the under. You want to go over under on the 4,550 and a half number for Aaron Rodgers. It's a pretty big number. Vegas is so smart. They're adding the extra game, and Mm -hmm. that is tempting people to do the over on these bets. Let's remember, folks, how do you know the quarterbacks are not going to sit in that last week? Are we sure that it's going to be 17 games? Aaron Rodgers has, say it with me, Joe, crested this number once in his entire 16-year NFL career, and that was in 2011 when he only played 15 games. I think the number's too high. You know they want to run the ball. A.J. Dillon is going to get rushing attempts. They want to control it. If you think the Packers are going to be good and there's going to have positive game script and you're dealing with an older quarterback, I will hit the under here, minus 112. This next one is a fascinating quarterback number at the time we're talking about it because of the injury. Now, in my mind, I think Dak Prescott going into the season, quote-unquote healthy, had a real shot at 5,000 yards because mm-hmm. two years ago, he nearly hit that number in just 16 games. So now you're getting that extra game. The number is 4825 and a half. So 4825 and a half. The over plus 102, the minus 130 on the under – I think this is an over, and I don't I don't think this is close, again, if healthy. And I think the only reason you're getting the numbers you're getting on it right now is because people are a little concerned. And I think this number, you know, maybe, you know, if reports get better, maybe you see this number jump in terms of where it's set. So what are your thoughts on Dak? Are you, you seem a little bit more hesitant on the Cowboys than I am. 
On the Cowboys, yes. On Dak, no. To okay. hit this prop, he has to average 301 passing yards per game for only 16 games. He could be off week 17 and still hit this. Or mm. suppose the Cowboys are battling like I project them to be at 9-8, and eight, and he actually plays 17. Last year, before he got hurt, 371 passing yards per game, 2.4 touchdowns, 30.4 fantasy points. Give me plus money. I understand he could be hurt, but that's baked into the number. I'll take a chance here. I will take the over with Dak in what I think the Cowboys are going to be battling for a playoff spot, and he may have to play 17 games. Calvin Ridley, some people think in the fantasy football community, has an outside shot at being wide receiver one overall. And I was a very big Calvin Ridley guy last year, partially because Julio Jones was actually still there. I thought that's actually something that's good for the young wide receiver to continue to learn under somebody like Julio and also, you know, continue to have coverage pulled over. But when Julio wasn't around, Calvin Ridley still balled out. So that is good. Now this number is 1,375 and a half. That's the number. That's a pretty solid number. That, my friends is a Julio number. The question is, it's a different head coach. Is it a different philosophy? You have Kyle Pitts, you have Gage, you have Mike Davis. Ridley is your premium weapon, let's be honest, okay? I mean, I think Kyle Pitts is a phenomenal prospect. Let's see how he transitions into the NFL. But what do you think about this number? 1375 and a half over under is minus 112. What do you do with Ridley here? He had 1374 last year with Julio still hanging around. Falcons mm-hmm. passed plays per game last three years. Fifth, first, and third. I know Arthur Smith, new head coach, so we're uncertain. Are we grounding and pounding with Mike Davis and Kadri Allison? <laughs> we are not. I don't think so. No. no way. And listen, I don't think they're going to be very strong as a team, so I think they're going to be passing a lot. Ridley last year, first among wide receivers in air yards, fourth in receiving yards, seventh in targets, but only 13th in target share on the Falcons. That obviously goes way up. I think he has the same production with more volume, efficiency plus volume. He could lead the league in receiving yards over for Calvin Ridley. All right, let's talk about his teammate Kyle Pitts, the rookie sensation. And look, I understand why people are excited. They should be excited about him. The number for him I thought was fascinating. 800 and a half. That's the over under minus 112 on both. So what do you think about Kyle Pitts? Can he be the anomaly when it comes to rookie tight ends? Eventually, yes. This year, no. Most Mm -hmm. receiving yards by a rookie for tight end, Mike Dicka, 1,076. Shockey back in 2002, 894. Keith Jackson, 869. Chase Young, 864 back in 73. And John Mackey, 764. Do I think that Kyle Pitts is going to have the fourth best season ever of a tight end as a rookie? No, I do not. Even in the current climate of the way the NFL structured, like the way it's so wide open now and the need that the Falcons have, that's fair, and they're going to pass a lot. But and I he's think not going to play tight end only. He's probably going to line up sometimes out there as well. That's that's my argument for this number. Is that's why I think it's so fascinating. It's like, do you believe he gets work, you know, as a wide receiver basically, or as like this weird hybrid player? I think he does, Joe, but I think there's a learning curve for wide receivers, rookie Mm. wide receivers coming in the NFL, and we know there's a learning curve for rookie tight ends. Hayden Hurst is going to be a splinter. Gage will catch some passes. Zacchaeus will catch some passes. Mike Davis will catch some passes, all under the umbrella of Calvin Ridley. I think he has a very strong year, and I think he could eventually become this dominant of a tight end. I don't see it in year one. I will take the under. All right, Christian McCaffrey, the rushing total, 1200 and a half this is kind of built in of whether or not you think he can stay healthy because it feels like if he's healthy he smashes this number 1200 and a half minus 112 on the over and the under now look i understand he gets a lot of work in the passing game as well but boy what a difference for sam darnold to be dropped into this offense with all these these options dj moore his old friend robbie anderson terrace marshall looks like a nice player you got mccaffrey so i guess here's the question is carolina going to be careful with mccaffrey or is it back to business as usual and how does that impact this number What we need to remember is the under is always the sharp play because people want to root for things to happen. They don't want to root against them. With COVID as the variable here, you have to realize that that could also play a role. Does Christian McCaffrey play all 17 games? It's unlikely for any running back, and I'm not even talking about COVID. In his superb 2019 season, 287 carries, 4.8 yards per carry. Let's go with 260 carries at 4.6 yards per carry, which is still really strong. That's 1196. Run defenses they face this year, the Panthers. Pats, Washington, Buffalo, Mm. Tampa Bay, and New Orleans twice. It's a great number. I think it's right there, but I do like the under of McCaffrey. 
All right, let's see what you think about Kamara. His rushing total, 950 and a half, minus 112 on the over-under for him. 950 and a half. Look, they're going to have to use Kamara a lot, but historically it's been a lot of work through the air. Do you think he's going to scratch out a thousand yard season potentially here with just the need of what they're going to need from Alvin Kamara? And can he hold up to the amount of workload that maybe they're going to demand of him this year? We're already hearing some talk about Latavius Murray might not make the team. I think that's madness. I don't know. How is Freeman better than Murray? I don't know what they're doing over there. But what do you think of this 950 and a half number when it comes to Kamara's rushing total? Pop quiz, Joe. True <laughs> or false? Alvin Kamara has rushed for a thousand yards in a season in the false. NFL. I'm sorry. False. That is false. True yeah. or false? Alvin Kamara has rushed for over 940 yards in a season. Uh, that's also false. That is also false. One more, but my friend. they all had Drew Brees attached to them. That the, well, in some capacity, for the most part, not these last two so much. That's well, the, the only last difference. one. This will be the bonus okay. question. Alvin Kamara has rushed for wait, over wait, 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 wait. What do I win for the bonus question? Like, I feel like I've I've got the. It's like the pyramid. Like I'm moving my up. My eternal the respect is what Ugh. you get. That <laughs> worth more all than right. any monster. I'll answer it anyway. Me. Okay, go ahead. Alvin Kamara has rushed for over 900 yards twice in his four-year career. That is also false. That is. It's only once. Whoever's the running back, and I think it'll be Murray or Freeman, I think teams are going to center on Kamara. He Mm -hmm. obviously is elite in the passing game. 81, 81, 81, 82 receptions in four years. I am going under on this number. He's a superior weapon, but I don't think he's going to get the rushing attempts. I think he is fragile to a certain extent, which is why they're not going to hammer it to him. And I think we have some recency bias, Joe, because I'm a little sensitive about having Kamara's six touchdown game. Last I know year. you are. Oh, in our league, boy, Mike Randall had a hell of a season. Boy, he dominated. Everybody was 500, not Mike Randall. He was 12 and two, I think, going into that. Undefeated. I was undefeated. You were undefeated. Oh, I almost beat you. I lost by a couple points that that one week i i wanted to be the guy to do it to you because if you're gonna lose lose to a friend that's what i always say i I thought you were the team and you still had a great week and you you should be bitter you absolutely should be bitter about that i know i know six six i'm taking the under with kamara can have a great year but still go under yeah well look i've won your respect which is nice. Well, hopefully Mike Randall has won you some money here with some of the discussions we've had. So once again, make sure you go over to bettingpros.com, check out those consensus lines. And if you see better numbers on anything that we've talked about today, you say, wow, this is even better number. I'm going to go ahead and bet that at MGM or FanDuel or DK, or wherever you want to go do that. That's what betting pros is for. You can see all the lines at one time and make your decisions there. And of course, it's always a good decision to follow Mike Randall on the Twitter machine at Randall Rant. You can check out his work in my fantasy football black book. He did the whole wagering section like always because he's very smart when it comes to that. That's why I like to have him on the shows. And that's on Amazon. You can also check out his work at Roto Underworld, Roto Viz and the Action Network. Mike Randall, it is always a pleasure to chat with you, my friend. Great stuff. Great stats. And, uh, I mean, I've won your your respect. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. Nothing better than that. I owe you a beverage, my friend. Thanks for having me. There you go. All right, that'll do it for us. But the story of the game goes on. For Randall, I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids.